Panda Global recently made a switch to its logo. As a designer, I wanted to talk about why they made the change and analyze the logo to see if it succeeds. But you might be asking, why make this video now instead of when they released it, when they made the announcement? Well, it takes some time to actually see how a logo works and get a feel for it. In this case, we gave Panda a few months. Also because I had uni. Anyways, we'll be taking a look into the design by judging it based on what makes a logo good. But before that, let's start with why. Why did they change? And was it even necessary? The CEO of Panda, Alan Bunny, this guy, says, When we founded the team, we had a motto, do right by the players. Over time, we realized we weren't just a team anymore, we were so much more. And the players we had to do right by weren't just our own, but the players of all the games we support. We're an organization now, and we exist for you, the fans. From the video, we can tell that they moved from being an esports team to an organization. Their overall focus for competition had changed. While they were still an esports team, they are now also including hardware, stats, health, and content to their overview. And while this may come a bit out of place, Panda has been showing signs of this change for years. Let's look at the timeline. Back in 2018, we saw the release of Panchan, the mascot for Panda. While she was a mascot for the competitive players, this one was separate from the other teams that would normally use animals from their logo. Panchan was heavily tailored towards the FGC slash Smash community, which have a history of watching anime, showing Panda's sign of their more right by the players mentality. Fast forward to 2019 and they've announced a Kickstarter for the ultimate GameCube adapter, which also started the sub-brand PG Hardware, at least as far as I'm aware of. But this was another sign of their direction changing from team to organization. Finally, we saw 2020 with the tearless master himself, Justin Wong, signing with the team as a content creator. By the end of 2020, it was only a matter of time before they rebranded into who they are today. So was it necessary? Yes. Yes, it was. It made a lot of sense. They weren't just fierce, fighting, and aggressive anymore. They were changing and growing their focus to be an esports organization, justifying their logo change and rebrand as a whole. They weren't just doing it out of nowhere. They were doing it already. All right, let's talk about the logo. But before we do that, we have to go over what makes a logo good. According to Sagi Haviv of Chermayev and Geismer and Haviv, the firm that created the logo as well as these, some you might recognize, a good logo needs to have three things. It needs to be appropriate, distinct, and simple. That's it. It doesn't need to show that they're about gaming. It doesn't need to explain what they do. It doesn't need to tell a story. It just needs to be those three. First off, let's talk about being distinct. Good logo should be able to separate itself from its competitors and be remembered. Because Panda has its offsets, PG Health and PG Hardware, this doesn't mean just being different from the other esports orgs. It means they have to separate themselves from gaming companies, gaming niche health companies, and other Panda-related logos. Let's look at the esports one first. Here is a screen of notable esports logos in all black along with Panda. Despite being in a grid, a lot of these logos do a good job standing out by themselves. In the case of Panda, the silhouette and the design of the logo are different enough from the others using the octagon shape and the white outline so that they're not lost from the crowd. It's very different from the others, despite them all being in esports. Similarly, when you look at hardware and health, there really isn't one that's close to it. A lot of logos are very edged and spiked up or round and curved. Panda just does a bit of both to separate itself. The same can be said about games and health, though there really isn't a lot going on in this department as of yet. At least not that I'm aware of. And finally, Panda logos. The WWF and the Panda Express may have a bit of problem looking like each other, but that isn't the case for the esports org, showing just the face and geometric shape and not the rest of the body. And there we have it. After pairing it with logos related to Panda, we can say that its design gives Panda an identity that's different from the rest of their competitors. So it ticks one of the three boxes. Let's move on to being appropriate. Being appropriate means having the design suit the tone that you're going for. 
If you're a fashion luxury brand, your logo should exude prestige. If you're a tech company, you're probably going to go with something modern and simple. And if you're an esports team, you go for ferocity and energy. So what do you do for an esports organization? Well, you want something encompassing. A logo that covers all the aspects of what you do, whether it's competition, content, hardware, health, or whatever other ventures you decide on. Because of Panda's hands covering everything, the tone it had to address was Core Gamer, having a broader tone compared to Competition. From that reasoning, the new Panda logo does this successfully. It's modern and tells you it's within the tech space from the typography, and the simplicity makes it feel like an established and trusted brand. It would have been nice to see the hold forward energy being conveyed with the new design, like a hundred thieves, but it might not have been implemented because it's more of a campaign, so that's probably fine. Overall, the tone is appropriate enough. It's usually much better to be focused on a single tone, but with the new direction Panda finds itself in, their new logo suits it. All right, that's two out of the three. So let's go on to the last criteria, simplicity. This one's fairly straightforward. A logo is simple. It doesn't need a lot of detail. And you'll see this in a lot of big companies. Apple's logo is an apple, Donald's the golden arches, and Cloud9's is a cloud with nines. Point is, it doesn't need a lot. And while being simple helps the logo be more memorable, it's also there for practical purposes. It's much easier to reproduce and a lot more accurate. A simple logo can be shrunk really small or enlarged to huge sizes as much as you want, and it would maintain all its qualities, something that a detailed logo cannot. This is something that the old logo struggled with. It looked fine and large, but it had a difficult time when you put it in a small setting. The shape is still there, but a lot of details go missing, like the fur, the eyes, or the teeth. From what CGH has said, Panda had a hard time with the old one as well, saying it did not work well on white applications, was difficult to use on all the merchandise fans eagerly purchased, and couldn't be separated effectively from the word mark. That being said, these issues were fixed within the new logo, offering prominent shapes and a defined silhouette instead of an actual drawing. There's a lot less detail, and that means a lot less is missed out on when you're going small. It's simple, and it meets that criteria greatly. And that makes three of three. So to wrap this all up, Panda did a redesign because they went from an esports team to an esports organization. And to top it off, the new logo was distinct and simple. While it could have a more focused tone, their direction made a lot of sense. They went with something broader. So was the Panda logo redesign a success? Yes, it was.